Hey guys and welcome to this Train Sim Classic video. Today we are taking a look at the newly released Dorset Coast Phase 1 route from Golden Age Developments. We're going to take a look at the new section from Bomb of Central and we're going to take a run through to Swanage on one of the included scenarios with this freely released route. And uh, we're going to take a look at this scenario that's on the screen at the minute. So I'm loving this already. Um, before we actually get into the details of the scenario, I'm loving that when you actually load in, this appears the nice, like a page of a, um, I guess, a, a duty sheet almost. And it gives you the time that it left Basingstoke. It gives you all the details like, you know, Mitchell Dever and everything, and two minutes dwelling time, four minutes dwelling time, eight minutes at Bournemouth, which is where we are. That's a really nice touch. It's even got the length in uh, standard length units, the tonnage, which is 297, the weather remarks, past branch service at Corf Loop. Yeah, that's that's uh, a fantastic little feature. Even got the loco number and everything, and uh, obviously Chris, the guy that designed the you know that uh, made the loco, he gets a little name in there as well, which is cool. I'm uh, I'm really liking that's a really cool little innovation. I don't you know I know obviously other developers do do that sort of thing, but I've not seen that itself done before. Excuse me, ignorance if I've missed it, but yeah, that's uh, a brilliant little feature. So yeah, getting into the meat, obviously, of what we're, we're doing today, we're taking a look at the uh, Golden Age Development's Dorset Coast Phase 1, a route that I've been really excited for over the last few months. It's been looking absolutely superb, and I have had a little look around the Bournemouth sort of area, and these guys have... It's just incredible what they've achieved for, you know, as a freeware project. Um, we're going to start off here. We'll have a look around Bournemouth Central. We have got about five minutes here, so we've got time to have a good fly around, and if we need to, we can pause. But this is the fully custom made Bournemouth Central. I understand it's been done by Joe once again, who obviously makes quite a lot of the custom stuff for uh, Golden Age. And yeah, I can't even put into words just how how stunning that is for a freeware route. It's um yeah, it's very impressive. You know, the signage I and mean, the signage is obviously the least of it when you look at that, but the signage and everything is fantastic. The the overall detail but the, the model itself um, really does capture Bournemouth Central in the Steam era. Um, it, it looks absolutely brilliant. Obviously, these days there's a footbridge inside it. I'm guessing in, in the Steam days there wasn't, but um, at least I think there's a footbridge in there in modern times. I've not been to Bournemouth myself for about 16 years, so it's a long time since I've been. But yeah, you got the bay platform down here, and just look at the detail in the roof and everything. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, we've got a nine coach train, I believe, today that we're taking through to Swanage. Shouldn't be too much of a challenge with our U class low coach, quite a powerful engine. Um, but this, this this just captures the uh, essence of Bournemouth absolutely superbly. I've actually been uploading a few of my dad's old photos to um, Flickr this week, which were taken in 1966 at Bournemouth. Sort of inspired by the fact that this was coming out, and I'll hopefully overlay one of them on the screen at this point, which was taken at this location. and it's instantly recognisable. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, from over there, I'm loving the wood texture on that. It's really nice. But yeah, superb. Really, really good. Um, and obviously, this is phase one. This is an extension of the Purbeck line that came out and we videoed uh, when it came out. Was it two years ago now? Or last year? I can't remember. But it came out uh, a little while ago. And this is an extension of that route. So this is the Dorset Coast route. And it's quite a significant extension. It takes the route mileage now up to about 25 miles, which is broadly similar to the... Slightly shorter, but broadly similar to the length of the um, West of England line phase one. I'm just going to turn the game sound down a bit so it's not too overwhelming. Um, but that brings me on to probably the biggest feature of this route, which is mentioned in the manual, which is these brand new signals which have been added. These are the Golden Age Development Southern Region signals. And these have got script from Andy S, who's well known in the Steam side of TS for his fantastic signal scripting. Um, and these models replace the obviously the older ones that were from UKTS, which were at least 10 years old, and they're absolutely beautiful. Look at the detailing on those. I mean, that's just fantastic, because when you're going along, you really do see these as you're going along. The lamp um, graphics and everything, there's a little bit of a level of detail issue there, look, the, the disappearing, but hopefully obviously with an update that can probably be fixed, I'm hoping. Um, but otherwise, yeah, just look at the look at the uh, the view there. 
take a screenshot of that. It's just brilliant. Um, we'll have a little look down on the motive power depot in a sec. Um, uh, it's also got Harry's low poly steam locos, which is another cool innovation from Golden Age, uh, and the wagons that are, are lower uh, lower poly as well. And they make it so that you can have loads of stuff in your engine shed and run at 90 FPS. It's just brilliant. I love it. Um, really cool little innovation there. What I also love is that uh, we've actually got a proper signal box. You know, no thanks to Dovetail for uh, their in a, in, you know version of Bournemouth with their budget and everything. These guys have done it for free and they've done an absolutely superb job of it. And uh, obviously the long extended platform down here at Bournemouth Central. Again, I'll probably overlay uh, one of my dad's images just there, so you can sort of see just the the, the level of uh, quality that's gone into that. Um, because there's so many of these locals, we can't really appreciate the detail that's in here. But just look at the look at the workmanship. It's taken it to a whole new level. You know, I'm not just talking freeware; I'm talking payware as well. It's, it's obviously it's free work, but it pushes the bar all around. It's not just pushing the bar for freeware; it's just pushing the bar generally. It's um, the, the vents and everything, they're just the detail. Um, show about the little black shadow, but just generally speaking, the detail is absolutely second, second to none. Um, fantastic. So let's get underway from here. We'll just, what we'll, we'll do is I'll just sort of stick down here by the end of the platform uh, whilst we depart. There's no point in racing back up there. Uh, put the F5 hood on so I can see what I'm supposed to be doing. So yeah, we're taking this through to Swanage. We've got stops at uh, Pool, Wareham, Corf Castle, and we arrive at Swanage at 11.57, so that's about 50 minutes. So it's a decent length run uh, that we've got today. And uh, as I said, we've got, uh, I think it's said 297 tonnes on. So for one of these locos, it's not that much of a load because they are big, big, powerful locos. Uh, class, are they class 6 or class 5? One or the other, I believe. Uh, but the decent locos is more so you classes. Um, whilst we're waiting for the train to finally move, which it is now doing, the detail down this end of the route is again, you know, this end of the station. Look at this, it's got the sand dragon and everything. There is, is so much time and effort gone into this. Um, you've also got low poly coaches as well. Again, that keeps the FPS really high. We're, we're talking. 120 fps i mean that's bordering on the ridiculous to be honest it's fantastic um to have that sort of fps in ts and the detail to go with it is uh, impressive to say the least i'll right, just let me knock the reverser back here because i'm thrashing the hell out of the low and i want to set it off from the station so i'll just let this depart i'll shut up for a sec whilst it does So as we come out of Bournemouth, eventually we'll drop downhill all the way to Pool, essentially. I'm uh, just going to turn the game sound down again, so that you can hear me over over the noise of the loco. But yeah, we, we're essentially going to head downhill pretty much all the way to uh, to Pool, and then it's sort of on the coast to Wareham, essentially, um, in theory. But yeah, you got the, uh, the the really nice bankings and stuff that we've seen before in this uh, sort of route. We've got a viaduct coming, let's have a look at that. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to go over this, we'll uh, have a look at the, uh, the the map and everything.
note to dovetail, it is possible to do bridges without the uh, Kuju version. You know, that's better than the sort of thing we saw on the Huddersfield Leeds film where we've still got the obsession of using a bridge that was made in um, 2007. Kind of a train coming the other way there, look. I'll look at the semaphore as it drops. Oh, we've got sounds as well. I thought I heard a sound when I was tested it earlier when I was there more, uh, but I wasn't certain. We've got to get that down to 30 in a second. We go around the curve. Um, is, it, is it Brank something we're coming up to? Uh, we'll just pause whilst I have a look at the map. No one to press that on the map. So yeah, as I said, the route starts over here at Bournemouth and then it runs across uh, to uh, Branksome. So you've got the triangle here at Branksome. And also what you do get, and what we'll take a look at in a second, is you do get Bournemouth West, which is fantastic to see. That these days, obviously, is a depot. But back in Steam River, when this is set, that was the terminus for the Somerset and Dorset line, which um, obviously used to branch off here as well. And uh, you got the line through Parkston down to Poole, um, you got Paul here. You've also got Hamworthy, so you've got the Hamworthy branch down to the goods and everything at uh, Hamsworthy and uh, the junction and all the various things. Stuff here that I forgot where even existed back in the day. Obviously, the, uh, is it, uh, I guess that's Royal Navy something, I think, at Halton Heath. I know it's a military thing because I've been to Halton Heath before and I remember seeing all the fencing and stuff of it. Um, you got Wareham, which is where the original Purbeck line ended. And then we got the line, the Purbeck line, and I think there's been some updates done to that as well through to Swanage. Phase two is planned to take it right through to we Weymouth, which will be. Uh... Oh, this was fantastic. I can't even think of a superlative for that, but you get my drift. Um, be really good. I need to get a bit cold now. I've kind of, I've somehow killed the fire going down a hill, so we'll try and repair that uh, mess. So even with like the station and everything over there, Bournemouth West, we're still running at over 50 FPS here. And just look at the look at the signals and everything. Try a little. Uh... Yeah, they, they the difference with those is just uh, incredible. The detail and everything compared to what we had with the old UKTS ones, which let's be honest, they served the purpose and were good for what they had helped people achieve. But they'd seen the time, obviously. So we've got the junction here, we'll have a look around in a second. Let's just let me get this train slowed down to the speed that it needs to be doing. And we need to get it down to 30 miles an hour for the curve. And then we drop down Parkston Bank to Poole, which obviously in the other direction uh, will be a challenge for anybody in uh, terms of steam driving. It'll be a fantastic uh, challenge that when you're coming up from Swanage towards B Bournemouth or in the future from Weymouth so we'll pause it here and before we get too far we'll go down and take a look at Bournemouth West um, which again is all custom again and that's um, nice to see wow Every time you think you've seen something amazing, something more amazing comes along and, and sort of appears. It's just um, wonderful. That, even that's just screenshot worthy. It's uh, some ser seriously talented development going on here. The chimney breasts and everything. 
W. H. Smith stall up. Uh, what have we got here? Prime Minister resigns in disgrace. Unusually large, only baby born. <laughs> All of those. Those are some really cool adverts. I'm I'm not sure. I'm assuming some of these are probably. Are these custom made or have these come from something else? I'm guessing there's a custom made. Yeah, Brasso. That's obviously custom made because Brasso uh, and, and Guinness, to be fair, are uh, well-known brands. But yeah, the the uh, attention to detail and the quality as well is... is I'm sat here with a smile on my face. It's fantastic. I love it. Absolutely love it. I can see we spend a lot of hours on this. I mean, for me, this is this going down to the Steam side of TS is more Steam side is my escape from like work because obviously I work uh, for JT and it's all modern stuff. Generally speaking, it's just nice to have something to escape from the modern era of TS because it's so it gets so engrossed in that, and it's nice to just have something different that's so detailed and well made. It's um, superb to have it. The water tower, everything's just brilliant. Men on track always whistle before moving off. I just love the scenes. Scenes are just brilliant. You got the guy sat here. Got his, I don't know what he's done to his wheelbarrow. He's obviously starting it, but even the little generator and stuff. I'm not sure what that where that's come from, but it's uh, impressive. You got Bournemouth West Box. I mean, this is before we even talk about stuff like the points, um, rodding and stuff like that. Uh, so really nice gantries, splitting distance signals. Uh, the wash, the is that a banner of Peter or something on there? I don't know what that, that's a some sort of indicator. So that's something I've not really seen done in TSC before uh, when it comes to uh, steam mirror signalling. Uh, now this is where the train care depot is at Bournemouth these days, I think, in this shed here. So this is an old carriage shed. Uh, in those days, I think at Bournemouth West. As I said, it's where the Somerset and Dorset used to terminate their services. So they come down from Bath Green Park through Templecombe and then down eventually to here. Um. It just has that feel about it of being absolutely superb. The de the detail in you got bomb. I'm not sure what shed this is. Is it Branksome or Bournemouth West? I'm not sure, but yeah, it's uh, very very nice. So this is where it joins onto the uh, southern main line again at Branksome. Some more uh, power on. Branksome for Canford Cliffs. We've got another freight coming in. Oh. So that's another U class coming through the other way. It's worth noting these scenarios obviously have been created using not as much stock as they could have been, if that makes sense. Um, they haven't used the full suite of stock that they could have used. Um, you know, there are opportunities obviously to use even more community scenarios and stuff like that. When I do eventually finish my Western England pack, I'm sure I'll make one on this route, but obviously uh, we've got to finish that one first. It's getting there very slowly. We got but I'm on my 14th scenario at the minute. So we're on a 1 in 50 downhill now. This is Parkinson Bank, as I was mentioning. Um, I always remember there was a legendary clip here from Steam Days when I was watching one of the uh, BNR videos. Um, one of their old DVDs. I just look at that. It's just uh, so good. I can't even I can't even put into words just how how it fits together. As a root builder myself, it's just yeah, it's uh, brilliant. Really well, just well modelled and everything. I've, I've got root builders envy, that's for sure. The detail, and I, I mean, 
the detail that we've got on here is the sort of detail that you'd be you'd be really wanting on a payware modern route a modern era route and this is an old route you know when i say old i don't mean old as in this obviously it's just come out i mean steam era and i can't even begin to tell you how hard steam era is just from just doing it never mind actually getting the bloody fit stuff and, and detail and actually achieving custom models of everything the research that must have been done to actually get this done is um is beyond belief to be honest I mean, obviously, some bits will still be there. I'm guessing some of the... I'm not sure parks and they've got to still get the station building or not, but... Um, yeah. What I was on about back here with the um, B&R videos thing was... When I was a kid, I remember watching it, is... Sonadra Gresler took a steam rail to open. I think it might have been 1967. And there's a clip of it in that cutting there of actually leaving the banker behind. The bankers can't keep up with the train, basically, because Gresler's pulling away so hard. Um... An incredible little clip that I always remember seeing. So I'm just going to let the loco sort of find its way down the hill now. We're uh, still on the 1 in 60. We level off in a minute and we need to get the brakes in in a second actually for the uh, drop into pool, which is only one and a half miles until we actually get to pool now. Start putting some brakes in because we are doing 65 mile an hour. We come alongside the marina and the, the lake and stuff here. Um, I swear there's a miniature railway around here actually in real life these days. Not in those days, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm sure I've seen track around there. I used to go when I was a kid. We used to come down to Dorset quite a lot. Uh, I haven't been much for years, but I I'm swear I, that I remember a miniature railway around there in, in modern times. Either that I've just gone barmer, if I want already barmer. So just gotta get the loco slowed down ready now for going into the town. me putting the control I had an Xbox control plugged in and uh, I've just put that on the floor there and crossed the the thumb six got upwards and done that probably ought to consider actually slowing down So, bang on time, pretty much arriving. Can get some water in the loco there. Um, coal is nicely topped up. I don't know what the ideal fire mass is, I can't remember. But we'll have a little look back here, because this is the famous scene. As you come into pool, you've got the level crossing and everything. Um, and the box. And the, the footbridge. All of the buses, I'm guessing those are maybe even realistic numbers on the buses. But the, uh, the posters there, Lale and Serves London and stuff. Just uh, again, once again, superb detailing. Footbridge, you've got the signal pulling off with the sound on it. Uh, I think there's some sort of Great Western loco from the Riviera pack coming through. I, I haven't installed the enhancement pack that Golden Age actually just released. They released an enhancement pack for all the uh, Riviera in the 50s locos, if I remember rightly. Uh, I need to install that and have a proper look. I still need to actually have a proper look at the Glorious Devon route, but I haven't had a chance yet. Um, We've got the football. Is that the football ground? That's a pretty cool. Obviously, Paul don't have a very big team. Certainly not these days, anyway. 
Is that Hamworthy over there? Yeah, this is Hamworthy Goods over here, actually. So we can take a little look around uh, the dockyards and stuff. But, again, this is the sort of detail that you just don't expect, really. Uh, the scenes that are being created. I never realised how close Hamworthy Goods was actually to Paul itself. It's just there. Um, but this is a, a, a short little branch line that comes off the main at Hamworthy Junction. At the pillboxes and everything from when uh, World War Two. The scenes and stuff, uh, so much screenshot potential. Oh, I've, I've completely overfilled the tender here, the boiler here. I'm going to have uh, all sorts of priming going on. That's the Hamworthy Goods branch, though, there. And uh, we go along the causeway in a second as we leave Pool. Is this the bit where there's now a road going over? Am I thinking of Southampton and over there? I think I'm thinking of Southampton. I'm getting Pool and Southampton mixed up, aren't I? Um, going to throw a wild guess that that's the route towards Ringwood. As it was known, the old road, is it? I'm not sure if it is or not, but that's a, that's a wild guess that I've just chucked out there. Oh, we've got the Great Western one set off. Loving the uh, ambience of it all. Got the, uh, the good shed over here. Oh wow, it's actually got lights in it. Again, somewhere where you can put so, so much atmosphere. And th these are all the low poly wagons once again as well that have been put together. So you can fill yards up and, and again, once you know, get 100 FPS. And these yards full. You wouldn't know they were low poly. I actually genuinely didn't even notice they were low poly until then. There's a good variety of them as well. Right, we've got the road. We've got the right way. So let's get this thing on the road. Whilst we're working out of here, I'll let you guys uh, just enjoy the engine for a few minutes and... Keep quiet. We'll just take it in from the foot plate for a minute or two.
I'm just going to come back on it because we're going through uh, hand with it. But I, I really enjoyed that little run there. Uh, I just want to get a screenshot here of that. That might end up being the uh, that might end up being the thumbnail for this video. Uh, but yeah, just the, the immersion just there. Just I just feeling it, loving it. This is Hamworth Junction, so this is where the line to Hamworth Goods goes off. This is still here these days. You've still got a little branch down to Hamworth down there. Uh, single track. I think it goes down the back of the platform still at Hamworth as well. well obviously, it doesn't move the platforms about. Um, which, uh, yeah, looks really nice. Outside, inside, upside down, I'm sure it looks great as well. It's just, just brilliant. Subway. I can't, I just can't come up with enough superlatives, I'll be honest. So we're now going to work, uh, I think it's slightly downhill from here to... Um, Wareham, which is our next stop. We've got to stop at Wareham in a few minutes. Uh, should be there in about five minutes' time. Uh, we're just going back onto the higher speed and we'll get the regulator back open again. Start to work the loco a little bit harder. Put it in the outside view for you guys so you can actually see. Uh, this is what I was on about with the, the Navy Depot, Armour Depots, or whatever they're called. I'm not sure, I'll be honest. Uh, but. That's what we're going past at the minute. We're going to go through Holton Heath very soon. Holton Heath is the last place that we'll go through before we get to where them. Oh, why is that the Gerda Bridge down here that they've done? They have as well. Fantastic, that. Another nice detail. Uh, even got the little channels around the side, like the. I'm guessing they're like protection or something. I'm, I'm not sure, but. Love the telegraph posts and everything in the, the detail with those. I'm going to take another screenshot here just because that looks so good. Oh, I think I basically crashed here. So give it a minute. I've killed Torrington. So what happens when you try and take two screenshots together? It takes forever to take the second one. Talk amongst yourselves for a sec. Maybe it's just my train team that does that. I can feel a cinematic video coming on for this route. There's so much potential to do with it. So yeah, you got, like I said, the... Uh, the depot here that we're coming past. And that line goes over the top, actually. Look, and it comes back down the other side. Nice, easy running along here because it's level. It's just a sort of leisurely run along. I'm letting the water just drop out of it. To be fair, I'm going to put some in just because we're blowing off a bit. And uh, we don't need to be blowing off. So this is where we start coming around the side of what is known as the Isle of Purbeck. you got... Uh, if I remember it rightly as a kid, it's so long since I've really been around here. You got somewhere over here, you got Brown Sea Island, and that's is it the Scouts or something that got something to do with that? Um, and then you've also got over there Sandbanks, which is where you can get a ferry from Pool side across to Sandbanks, then you can get on the Isle of Purbeck that way and go into Swanage from the uh, from the eastern side of Swanage, uh, something that we used to do quite a lot actually back in the day. I remember there was a big fire there actually in the summer, if I remember right, one, this year. So yeah, this is all the detail going on at Hamworth, at Halton Heath, sorry, and this has changed a lot over the years, because these days, 
I went to see a bit of them back in 2012. And, uh, yeah, it's, just, it's all tree-lined here these days. That's changed so much. That's mad. I don't think there's any sidings or anything there anymore. If I remember rightly, like, you can just you can see all the way from there to where pretty much. Because I remember being able to see um, Bitten coming all the way along that straight. Shut the regulator. We don't need to do anything special here because we're going 50 mile an hour. We're nicely going along towards uh, where them. So only two miles to go. So we don't need to be thrashing it like mad. It's all levels uh, sort of track. Once again, uh, it's more basic station, but it's still been covered nicely. Uh, this is Holton Heath, as I said. So it's a very basic sort of station. It doesn't really go anywhere, come from anywhere. It doesn't really serve anything. I remember when I came, I was like, is this it? There's no way here. And, uh, yeah, it's a very basic sort of uh, place. I guess just to serve the depot, probably more than anything. So just getting some water still going in. Just making sure we try and keep that pressure under control. Although, I want to uh, have the loco ready for when we go to the Wavem line on the Swanage branch. Because we've got a, a good climb up there as we get onto the Swanage line. So, uh, we'll need to make sure we've got plenty of pressure in for that. We are just coming over the little summit here as you go into Wevham. You can actually see Wevham in the distance. And that's what I was referring to when I went to Alton Heath back in 2012. You could actually see Bitten pretty much leave Wevham. You can see it coming around the curve out of the station. So yeah, I'll read a little bit about the route from the manual as well. And uh, it's set... I'm just reading the manuals as I'm writing. That's something for driving. So it does say that there's likely to be a short break before they continue working towards uh, Weymouth in the new year. That's phase two, as I said earlier, that's going to come along there. Trying to drive and read from the manual at the same time is not the easiest thing to do, I'm sure you understand. There is a full history of the route in the, in the manual, actually, and I really like the way they've laid it out. It's uh, very nice. Uh, taking inspiration from the JT sort of manuals, without the stupid filters that JT someone managed to put on their pictures. Disclaimer, that's not to do with me and Tom. Um, but yeah, it's uh, a really, really nice looking manual that you get with the route. It's well worth having a look at it. I've had a little read for it myself. Clearly, all the information I took in from it hasn't really gone anywhere, but... The information I should take it at the moment was slowing down for where. Well. You got the uh, branch train in the platform there. Now slow down too much for where them. Actually, about two minutes later, so it's my bad for arriving late. Oh, I'm still a bit out of the platform. Oh, well, we stopped anyway. So, yeah, let's have a little look around where... Um, oh, that's the first Kuju building I've seen. Um, if that were a DTG, we might have seen a few of those by now. Obviously, Bournemouth, Southampton being the key one of those. But um, this is, again, it's uh, really nice. We actually had a look at this. Obviously, we've done a Perbet Langs video previously. And uh, I'm not going to go and point everything out on there because we've seen, we've well, I've sort of covered it. If you want to watch that video, go check it out. Um, I'll probably just let the let the route dry, train drive along and read some bits from the manual, to be honest. Uh, credit those guys that need crediting because it's uh, certainly deserving of some credit, is this. 
See, we've got a vacant nine mournful coaches. I have never seen inside the... Uh, never realised that you could see all this stuff inside the, the break coach. That's quite cool. And uh, they're from Matrix Trains. God and Mac uh, coaches. Very nice. The uh, only downside to these coaches is the sounds, really. I think if the sounds could be improved, that would uh, make them an instant massive hit. So it looks like we're ready to go. We are next stop, Corf Castle. We've only got nine minutes to do six miles, so we probably do want to get a bit of a wriggle on here because we're supposed to be crossing a train there. We don't want to be too late, do we? So Again, I'm going to turn the volume up. You guys can enjoy this climb, and then we'll enjoy the relaxing run into Swanage.
that is the uh, summit of the climb we're coming up to just now. There'll be another climb out of Corf Castle, but that's the summit of the main one. Um, and I remember that climb from... Well, this climb, we're still on it, it's just for a little bit longer. Um, I remember this climb from 2009 when I did the... I think it was the first steam... It was either the first or second steam back to Swanage from London. Uh, it was Tammere. And that really struggled coming up here with a full load. It was a, a right battle to get up the top of this climb. Although the thing I remember most about that trip was 37.706 on the return. Uh, which was on as far as Woking. That was pretty beast. Yeah, it's quite a steep climb out of uh, Wareham. From work at Junction up to her work. Up to here. I've forgotten where here is actually. Where is here? Our first book of us to where the, the oil terminal used to be. So it's quite a measured climb there. I've not... I could have worked the local a bit harder. We have got nine on the draw bar. It's quite a heavy load, obviously, so... You need to get some water in. So you got some of the many freight sidings there, and obviously, yeah, I guess you'll be able to do longer freight runs with those now as well, uh, with the pickup freight. I right, well jumped the gun with that, saying the boy at the summit. This is the summit that we're just coming up to now. So yeah, going going back to what I was on about with the manual, obviously. Um, you do get a full route guide, you get pictures of all the stations and everything like that. Um, you get the requirements list and, and stuff. The requirements is, are pretty pretty limited, really. For a freeway route, they're pretty limited. You need the key ones, are the, the most important ones, are Riviera Line. Riviera Line in the 50s. Weardale and Teesdale Network and West Highland Line Extension. Those are the really important ones of Essential. You need those no matter what. The ones that you, you still need, but they're not as important, are Western Lines of Scotland, the Woodhead Line, the Settle and Carlisle, the West Somerset Railway from DTG, the Falmouth Branch, and then the Freeware side of things, you need the VP Grass and Tree Packs, uh, the Golden Age Signal Lane Equipment Pack, and the UK Train Sim Freeware Clutter Pack. Um, and obviously, this route comes with an install as well, so you don't have to worry about placing files or anything like that. But it does come in two parts, and you must make sure that you run it as an um, administrator. It should automatically find your location of train sim, but if it doesn't, you can browse and select where it is. It's uh, very simple to install, just make sure you install part one first, then part two second. Simple as that, really. So we are still a bit late here because we're supposed to be at Corf Castle now and we're still over a mile away. It's probably to do with my defensive driving to be honest because uh, a lot of my driving has been pretty defensive in this uh, trip. The only bit where I've really sort of attacked it was that climb just then when we went up um, from Wurgo. So you got Corf Castle there on the horizon looking, uh, well looking broken as it always does but looking really nice in TS. So we're going past where Norden is these days. This is where Norden is, the uh, park and ride station on the uh, Swanage branch. Uh, and you do have the little miniature uh, Navigator Railway actually in here. So that obviously you can still see where that uh, is in, in real life. And I'm uh, not sure what, what quarry it was. I'm, I know there was a quarry or something up there that it used to be related to. Let me get some brakes in ready for the uh, stop at Corf Castle. It's uphill again from Corf, but I'm not going to go throwing in loads of coal and stuff in there because it's only a short climb. And uh, then it's all down to the Swanage, and we need the local to be quiet when we get to Swanage, obviously. You don't want to arrive at Swanage with um, a raging inferno in the, uh, in the firebox. So we're supposed to cross another train here, so let's have a look. Yeah, it is here, waiting for us, look. Sorry, mate, for making you late. I'm coming in at full preservation line speeds. 
which I shouldn't be doing. I should be going faster than that. Sorry, driver. Sorry, mate. Thanks, Pam, for standing in his shot. Always somebody. It's not in a, it's not in a preserve. Oh, there's always somebody in the bloody shot. <clears throat> Make sure, obviously, that we clear the uh, back of the cross in there. See, with that late, the, the AI train is actually setting off there because I'm so late. So you should get the road as soon as I clear that. Obviously, in real life, you'd wait for the token, but train sim being train sim, there's only so much you can actually do with it, obviously. So yeah, the, the starter here, obviously, in this direction is quite advanced to allow long trains to get clear of the uh, of the crossing. Of the crossover, sorry. But we've seen this before with uh, with the Perbet line. Again, if you want to see this covered in full detail, um, do take a look at that video. Um, once, you know, as before, it, it really does capture the essence of it and uh, looks... Uh, Really nice. We actually did it in two videos. I did a cinematic version on it on it as well, uh, which again I'm probably going to do another cinematic video. I just love the the um, ambience of it all. To be honest, just just how just how you can do little cool things like that, and then you got the other train there taking off towards Wareham with two coaches on. So I think this scenario is set to. In, I'm guessing this scenario is set early sixties. It's a that's a blind guess to be honest, but I'm guessing that's when it's set. Uh, I've already got the road to go, so we can set off from here. Again, I'm not going to go throwing coal or anything in. I just want to get this train to uh, to Swanage. We don't want too much uh, steam when we get there. Although we want to have enough steam to go over the summit at Harmon's Cross. set it there and leave it, let it find its own way. So I'll watch this from the outside whilst I uh, read out the credits to this thing because it's um, it really does deserve that. So much like Perbert Line, it's the same it's the same core of the team that's done this route. So you've got Graham Monteith, that is the um, um, root builder and everything, so he's done the project management, the reference material, which that's uh, a mammoth task in itself, the track, the signalling, the scenery building and management, and the custom assets assistance. And it says there, while I've managed the project from its inception and undertaken a lot of the grunt work, the truth of the matter will be that I would not have been able to make a start without the constant support of his friends. Uh, that's Graham's words in the manual there. Um, Joe Dove, so that's the guy that's done the custom assets that we've seen and uh, many stations. Graham's words on that are uh, speaking candidly. Without Joe's contributions to this project, it would simply not exist. When Graham started the Dorset Coast, it was merely an exercise in teaching himself how to use the route builder and he never dreamed of releasing it to the public. The assets Joe's created have truly brought this route to life and he's in indebted to him for his efforts. And uh, I echo that sentiment because we're all indebted to him, really. It's uh, incredible. And then you've got Harry Lewis, who is the uh, who is from Golden Age, obviously, as well. You've got track signalling and custom assets assistance sound there. And uh, there's some very kind words about Harry. And also Matt Jarchler for custom assets and Robert Skipworth uh, for custom assets. Again, there's a, a write-up on all those guys and their involvement with the project. There's also some additional freeware being added in from other people. And there's additional credits. There's inclusions from Andy, Andy S, Richard Maxted, Mundo and Kevin Newboy included with the route. Um, get this a bit half faster up here. Um, there's various references listed and stuff like that. So yeah, do make sure you go and check out this manual when you download the route. There is a full write-up of the route and uh, well worth reading about it. So we have got now four miles left to Swanage. We're just coming 
gradually around to where the summit of the line is at Harman's Cross. A bit of a steadier climb than I probably wanted, to be honest. We'll, be, we'll still be about two minutes late when we get to Swanish, so we're, we're holding time in effect, but um, yeah, we need to uh, get a big one, so to speak. Hoping I can make it over here without having to touch the fire. And essentially, once we get over the summit, we can just roll down the other side, put water in, and basically arrive with a nice quiet ending. Again, I'm ignorant to what's been actually changed on the original permit lane, but I'm led to believe there's been some quite, quite a few changes on it. Um, it's not, I've not driven it for a while because my focus obviously has been on the West of England scenario part that I'm doing. So. Uh, but yeah, really enjoying it. Recognising exactly where I am, coming up the uh, curve to where Harmons Cross Station would be. It's where the campsites are nowadays here, but to where the station at Harmons Cross should be in real life, modern times, is by this bridge. As I said on the Perbet video, Harmons Cross is a new build station. There was never actually a station, I believe, as far as I'm aware, at Harmons Cross. It's just on this, literally on the on the summit of the line, right on the summit where the, uh, the station was built. And that's testament to the Swanage Railway and how you know how much they've achieved to so actually be able to do that. But yeah, this is where the passing loop is these days. The only passing loop on the branch in the old days was the uh, the one that we've just gone through at Corf Castle. The ironic thing about it being that when Swanage Railway in the early 2000s were operating a passing loop, they were operating it at Harmons Cross until they reopened the passing loop at Corf. Their passing loop at Corf didn't open until like I want to say early 2010s. So we need to get water in now. We're over the summit. Get the water in. And we can shut off and just let this log cover find its way nicely down to uh, just one of 180 downhill. Two and a half miles to go. If you do have a if if you if you like Tom, let's let's use Tom as an instance here, because I know he's he's not really a massive steam era person for TS. Um I know he's put a little bit of investment into his steam mirror side of it. If you're sat there thinking, I'd really like to get into the steam mirror side of TS, but I'm, I'm one, I've no idea what to buy. Two, I've no idea how to do it. You know, drive it or fire it. So far, like that. If you're looking for a basis to learn from and enjoy the learning as well, I would recommend these Golden Age routes. So this one and the West of England route. The requirements for the scenarios, basically, you get the, if you get the requirements in the manual for the scenarios, will give you a nice, solid set of Southern Era steam stuff. Basically, a complete set of Southern locos and stock and stuff that you need to re recreate. Quite an interesting and re realistic uh, set of uh, railways. And it's a great place to learn and begin to understand what it is to drive steam locos on TS, because it is a totally different experience to modern. As I said before, it's a totally different thing. It's world to buy. And there's something just relaxing. I mean, doing a video and driving steam at the same time, to be honest, is quite stressful. Because I'm permanently looking and trying to talk, trying to speak, speaking eloquently for me, as difficult as it is, being from where I'm from. But it's amazing to have this side of the simulation open to you if it's something that you're interested in getting into because it's something just so rewarding when you get it right and unlike with the diesel side of TS you're not just pulling a handle full power get up to speed shut the handle you're constantly looking you're basically a, a plumber and, a, and everything at the same time you're looking at your water levels you're looking at your coal levels you're looking at I've got that climb coming up in five miles I need to get the loco ready to uh, to perform up that hill that sort of thing you know like when, when I was on about I don't want the local to make loads of noise and stuff like that. If I was driving a diesel in TS, I wouldn't have that to worry about. I'd just literally get something about it, shut the power, and it'd get a bit boring coming down here. Whereas it's not really at the minute. I've got the braking to worry about, the vacuum braking, the the pressure's now dropped nicely to 159 up there because I want it to be quiet when we get to Swanage. You know, that side of things. So if you're looking to get into that side of things, so in, into enjoying steam in TS, but you're like, where do I start? If you've got a little bit of money to invest and you're looking to invest, particularly, for instance, in um, Caledonia Works' collection, because that's a guy that really does deserve the investment. 
you know, I really would say that the Golden Age routes are the place to start, and the requirements list for the scenarios that's in the manual. Starting to tick some of the stuff off that list is probably a really good place to actually position yourself, I would say. Um, but yeah. I've, I, I enjoy these routes so much, I can't even put into words how much I enjoy it. The only thing I'd love is if there was a Yorkshire one. Um, I'd love to see, like, the Yorkshire area. Uh, I think I've... I'm honest, I think the only way I'm going to get that is if I did it myself uh, because it's such a, a niche subject to get the steam area of any area. You've got to have somebody that's actually interested in making it in the first place. But uh, to actually have steam like this and authentically made and everything, it's just fantastic. So we're coming into Swanage, where the uh, loco shed and stuff is. Of course, Swanage shut after the end of steam. It shut in 1960, uh, 1972, Swanage shut to steam. Uh, to, in general, it shut to steam. I think it was 66. There might have been some, some in 67. 66, 67 was when the last steam came to Swanage. Uh, and that was until 2009 from the main line. That was until 2009. I had that issue with this uh, disappearing and stuff last time we came. And I'm not sure if they put a new turntable and stuff in since the last route came out. So that's cool to see. And they've obviously got the... The issue where I could see through the floors gone, so that's really nice to see that's been sorted. The single road engine shed at Swanage and, and everything that you that we all know and love about Swanage. Gotta remember I've got a long train, I probably ought to uh, probably ought to slow down a bit. Let's not end the video by uh, crashing straight into the buffers. Obviously, this one is just quite a short platform, so you can't even get the full nine coach rake in there. But that was a, a really, really enjoyable run there. I've really, really, I've <clears throat> sincerely enjoyed that. I can't even put into words, to be honest, how, how fantastic it is. Um, as I said, it is free where it's free to download from Golden Age. Um, they have got a donation button on the website, and I believe you get free access to stuff if you download and if you donate and stuff. I'm going to go and throw some money over there now because these guys deserve not one but many beers if that's the drink of choice for what they've achieved with this. So I'm going to go drop a donation in there. If you love what you if you love what you you play with these roots from Golden Age, I would highly recommend you do the same because these guys, it's amazing what they're achieving. You know, this is the sort of thing that, quite honestly, I'd sit there and pay a, a decent whack of money for this. It's better than most payway roots, not just some payway roots, it's better than most payway roots. Um, and there's a bright future in Trains and Classic in the Steam Air side of things when you've got guys doing stuff like this and uh, yeah I just can't thank you guys enough for what you've achieved with it. it's brilliant cheers for all your efforts thanks very much for watching as well guys appreciate you as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe and you can check Tom out Fridays and Sundays on Twitch that's twitch.tv forward slash train team underscore TV I've been Mark cheers for watching guys see you later goodbye